The city of Hamelin had always been a peaceful and prosperous place. But that all changed when the rats arrived. The townspeople had noticed many rats then and there at first, but soon the rodents were far and wide. The rats were causing all feathers of problems. They masticated through food inventories, ruining crops and stores of grain. They also eroded through rustic shafts and cables, causing damage to structures and houses. The reek of rat feces and urine was overpowering, and the townspeople were hysterical that the rats would spread complaints. The townspeople tried everything they could suppose to get relief from the rats. They set traps and poisoned bait, but the rats were too clever and too multitudinous. The townspeople also tried to keep their food stores and houses clean, but it was a losing battle. As the rat problem worsened, the townspeople came decreasingly hopeless. They held meetings and argued over what to do, but no one could agree on a result. Some people suggested bringing in a platoon of pussycats to hunt the rats, but others were bothered that the pussycats would beget further problems than they answered. The city council was especially divided on what to do. Some members wanted to invest in a new decimation program, while others argued that it was too precious and that the townspeople should just learn to live with the rats. The situation in Hamelin came dire, and the townspeople were starting to lose stopgap. It sounded as though the rats were winning, and the city's formerly peaceful thoroughfares had come overrun with vermin. The people of Hamelin knew that they demanded help, but they did not know where to turn. The city's mayor and council had been meeting for days to try and come up with a result to the rat problem. But despite their stylish sweats, they couldn't agree on what to do. Some members of the council wanted to hire an exterminator to get relief from the rats formerly and for all. They argued that this would be the most effective and effective result, but others were bothered about the cost of such a program. Another body within the council argued for a more unresistant approach. They believed that the townspeople should learn to live with the rats and take ways to minimize their impact. This group suggested that the townspeople could store their food more precisely, keep their homes cleaner, and seal up any rat-sized gaps in their structures. But still, other members of the council dissented. They refocused that the rats were causing real damage to the city's structures and food stores. They argued that it was only a matter of time before the rat infestation caused a major outbreak of complaints or indeed a fire. The debate continued for days, with no end in sight. The city's mayor grew decreasingly frustrated with the council's incapability to come up with a result. He knew that the rats were causing real problems for the city, and he wanted to take action to get relieved of them. But with the council so deeply divided, it sounded as though there was no way forward. The mayor knew that he demanded to find another result, but he was not sure where to turn. As he sat in his office, pondering the problem, he heard a faint sound in the distance. It was a strange and beautiful tune, coming from nearly outside the city. The mayor stood up, curious to know further about this mysterious music. As the mayor of Hamelin followed the strange and beautiful tune, he discovered a mysterious foreigner playing the flute. The man was dressed in bright and various apparel, and he introduced himself as the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper told the mayor that he'd the power to get relief from the city's rat problem formerly and for all. The mayor was skeptical at first, but he was hopeless about the result. The Pied Piper offered to get relief of all the rats in the city for a figure, which he said would be relatively reasonable. The mayor was intrigued by the offer and asked the Pied Piper how he'd go about working the rat problem. 
The Pied Piper explained that he'd a magic flute that could charm the rats and make them follow him wherever he went. He said that he'd lead the rats out of the city, far down from Hamelin, where they would no way beget any further problems. The mayor was reluctant at first, but the Pied Piper was conclusive. He promised that he could get relieved of the rats within a day, and the mayor decided to take a chance on him. The two men shook hands, and the Pied Piper set off to do his work. True to his word, the Pied Piper began to play his magic flute, and soon rats began to appear from every corner of the city. They swarmed around the Pied Piper, transported by the music. The townspeople were amazed as they watched the Pied Piper leads the rats out of the city, down to the swash, and across the water to a distant hill. As the Pied Piper faded over the hill with the rats, the townspeople rejoiced. They celebrated in the thoroughfares, thankful that the rat problem had eventually been answered. But as the Pied Piper returned to the city to collect his figure, the mayor and the council dithered. They were amazed by the Pied Piper's capacities, but they were also upset about the cost of his services. In the end, the mayor and the council decided not to pay the Pied Piper the full quantum he requested. The Pied Piper was angry and hurt by this decision, and he pledged to take his vengeance. He played his flute formerly more, and this time it was not rats that appeared, but commodity much more terrible. The Pied Piper of Hamelin had a magical tune on his flute that had the power to attract and charm all the rats in the city. As he played his tune, the rats came out of every corner of the city, drawn to the sound of the Pied Piper's flute. The rats were transported by the music, and they followed the Pied Piper as he walked through the thoroughfares of Hamelin. The Pied Piper led the rats out of the city, down to the swash, and across the water to a distant hill. The rats followed him every step of the way, unfit to repel the power of the magical tune. The townspeople watched in amazement as the rats faded over the hill with the Pied Piper. They could not believe that someone had eventually set up a way to get relief from the rats that had been causing so numerous problems. As the Pied Piper led the rats out of the city, the townspeople began to notice a change in the atmosphere. The air sounded fresher, and the thoroughfares sounded cleaner. Without the rats, the city was a different place. The Pied Piper continued to play his tune as he led the rats further and further down from the city. He did not stop until he led them to a distant vale, far from Hamelin. There, he released the rats and played a final tune, bidding them farewell. The rats scurried off into the vale, no way to be seen in Hamelin again. The Pied Piper returned to the city, where he was saluted as an idol. The townspeople were amazed by his capacities and thanked him for getting relief from the rats. But as the Pied Piper came to collect his figure, he was met with resistance from the mayor and the council. They were reluctant to pay him the full quantum he requested, and this decision would have terrible consequences for the city. As the Pied Piper of Hamelin played his magical tune on his flute, the rats followed him out of the city and down to the swash. They scurried after him, unfit to repel the alluring music that filled the air. As they reached the beachfront, the Pied Piper continued to play his tune. The rats, still under its spell, followed him into the water. The current was strong, and soon the rats were swept down by the rushing water. The Pied Piper continued to play his tune, and the rats plotted to keep up. The current grew stronger, and soon the rats were swept down, unfit to fight against the important current. They were carried downstream, drowning in the cold and enduring water. The townspeople watched in amazement as the rats faded into the swash with the Pied Piper. 
They could not believe that someone had eventually set up a way to get relief from the rats that had been causing so numerous problems. As the Pied Piper led the rats into the swash, the townspeople began to notice a change in the atmosphere. The air sounded fresher, and the thoroughfares sounded cleaner. Without the rats, the city was a different place. The Pied Piper continued to play his tune as he led the rats further and further down the swash. He did not stop until he led them to a distant vale far from Hamelin. There, he released the rats and played a final tune, bidding them farewell. The rats scurried off into the vale, no way to be seen in Hamelin again. The Pied Piper returned to the city, where he was saluted as an idol. The townspeople were amazed by his capacities and thanked him for getting relief from the rats. But as the Pied Piper came to collect his figure, he was met with resistance from the mayor and the council. They were reluctant to pay him the full quantum he requested, and this decision would have terrible consequences for the city. The Pied Piper of Hamelin had done what no bone differently could do. He relieved the city of the rat infestation that had agonized it for so long. The townspeople were overjoyed, and they promised to pay the Pied Piper his figure. The Pied Piper was happy with this and left the city. Still, when the Pied Piper returned to Hamelin to collect his figure, the mayor and the council refused to pay him. They claimed that his figure was too high and that he hadn't completed the job to their satisfaction. The Pied Piper was incensed. He'd fulfilled his part of the bargain and had successfully relieved the city of its rat problem. The mayor's turn down to pay him was a breach of trust, and he demanded that they fulfill their pledge. The mayor and the council were adamant in their turn down to pay the Pied Piper. They argued that they had no way agreed to his figure and that they would not pay him. The Pied Piper was left with no choice but to leave the city empty-handed. As he walked out of the city, the Pied Piper was filled with wrathfulness and resentment towards the people of Hamelin. He'd done what they couldn't do, and they had refused to pay him for his services. The Pied Piper knew that he'd been wronged, and he pledged to take vengeance. The Pied Piper returned to Hamelin with his flute, and as he played his tune, the children of the city came out to follow him. The Pied Piper led them out of the city and into a near dell, where they faded without a trace. The townspeople were devastated by the loss of their children, and they realized that they had made a terrible mistake in refusing to pay the Pied Piper. They searched high and low for their children, but they were in no way set up. To this day, the Pied Piper's tune can be heard echoing through the thoroughfares of Hamelin. It serves as a memorial of the terrible mistake that the city made in refusing to pay the Pied Piper for his services. The Pied Piper of Hamelin had been wronged by the city's mayor and council, who had refused to pay him his figure for getting relief from the rats. In his wrathfulness and resentment, he decided to take vengeance on the city by using his magical capacities to take a commodity they valued dearly, their children. The Pied Piper returned to Hamelin with his flute, and as he played his tune, the children of the city were bedazzled. They followed him as he led them out of the city and into the girding country. The children's parents were originally too abstracted with their diurnal conditioning to notice their children's absence. But as the hours went by, they began to realize that commodity was wrong. They frenetically searched for their children, but they were nowhere to be set up. Meanwhile, the Pied Piper continued to lead the children deeper into the country. The children were fully transported by the music, and they followed the Pied Piper without question. They moved through fields and timbers, over hills and deans, until they reached a delve at the bottom of a mountain. 
As the Pied Piper played his tune, the children entered the delve, and it closed behind them. The parents of the children soon realized that their children had been let out of the city by the Pied Piper, and they began to search for them humorlessly. They ultimately discovered the delve at the bottom of the mountain and set up that it was sealed shut. There was no way to enter, and the parents were left with a terrible feeling of loss and grief. The Pied Piper had successfully taken the children of Hamelin, and no one knew what had come of them. Some said that they had been taken to a magical land, where they lived in eternal happiness. Others believed that they had decomposed in the mountains, unfit to survive without their parents' care. Anyhow of what had happened to the children, the people of Hamelin knew that they had made a terrible mistake in refusing to pay the Pied Piper. They had let their pride and rapacity get in the way of their better judgment, and they had paid a terrible price for it. The story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin serves as a memorial of the troubles of rapacity and the significance of recognizing our pledges. It's a tale that has been passed down from generation to generation, advising us of the consequences of our conduct and the significance of treating others with fairness and respect. In some performances of the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin, it's said that after leading the children out of the city, he takes them to a secret underground grotto where they live in safety and happiness. According to the legend, the Pied Piper had been treated unfairly by the city's mayor and council, who had refused to pay him for his services in clearing the city of rats. In his wrathfulness and frustration, he decided to take the city's children as his vengeance. As he played his magical tune on his flute, the children of Hamelin followed him out of the city and into the girding country. The parents of the children were ignorant of their children's absence until it was too late, and they were unfit to stop the Pied Piper from taking them down. After leading the children through fields and timbers, over hills and deans, and across gutters and aqueducts, the Pied Piper brought them to a secret underground grotto. It was said to be a place of wonder and magic, filled with auditoriums and cradles and filled with the sweetest of music. The children were happy in their new home, and they lived in peace and safety under the vigilant eye of the Pied Piper. They were free to play and explore, to laugh and sing, and to live their lives to the fullest. Meanwhile, the parents of the children were devastated by their loss. They searched far and wide for their children, but they were nowhere to be set up. It was only latterly that they learned that the Pied Piper had taken them down. Some of the parents tried to find the secret grotto where the children were said to be living, but they were unprofitable. Others gave up stopgap of ever seeing their children again, believing that they were lost ever. As for the Pied Piper, he was said to have lived in the grotto with the children, playing his magical tune on his flute and watching over them numerous times. It was said that he came as a guardian and protection of the children and that they loved him as if he were their father. The story of the Pied Piper and the secret underground grotto is one of magic, wonder, and riddle. It's a tale of how the power of music and the kindness of one person can bring happiness and joy to those who need it most. After the Pied Piper had taken the children down and faded into the underground grotto, the city of Hamelin was left in a state of mourning and confusion. The parents of the missing children were agonized and hopeless, and the townspeople were angry and resentful. As time passed, still, the mayor and council of the city began to realize their mistake. They had failed to pay the Pied Piper for his services in clearing the city of rats, and in their capacity and arrogance, they had provoked his wrath. The mayor and council began to feel shamefaced and ashamed of what they had done, and they realized that they demanded to make amends. 
They decided to go to the secret underground grotto where the Pied Piper was said to be living and ask for his remission. The trip to the grotto was long and unfaithful, but ultimately, the mayor and council arrived at the entrance. They were saluted by the Pied Piper, who was still playing his magical tune on his flute, girdled by the children of Hamelin. The Pied Piper heeded the mayor and council's reason, and he considered their offer to pay him his figure. He knew that the city had learned its assignment and that the people had suffered enough, so he decided to accept their offer. The mayor and council handed over the figure to the Pied Piper, and in return, he released the children from his spell and led them out of the grotto. The children were overjoyed to see their parents again, and the parents were overjoyed to see their children safe and sound. From that day on, the Pied Piper was seen as an idol in Hamelin. His magical tune had brought the city both the end of the rat problem and the return of its misplaced children, and the people of Hamelin were ever thankful. The story of the Pied Piper and the city's reason is one of redemption and remission. It shows that indeed when we make miscalculations and do wrong, there's always a chance to make amends and make effects right. It also teaches us the value of treating others with kindness and respect, and the power of music to heal and bring people together. After the city council and mayor apologized and paid the Pied Piper his figure, he led the children out of the underground grotto and back to the city of Hamelin. As they surfaced from the grotto, the children were saluted with open arms by their parents and the rest of the city. The Pied Piper's magical tune hadn't only led the children out of the city, but also had led the rats to their demise, freeing the city of Hamelin from its rat problem. The townspeople were overjoyed to see the children and to learn that the city was eventually relieved of the rats that had been causing so important trouble. The children had numerous stories to tell about their time in the underground grotto with the Pied Piper. They spoke of the beautiful music that the Pied Piper played on his flute, and of the amazing effects that they saw and endured while they were there. The Pied Piper had come to be an idol in the eyes of the townspeople, and they thanked him for his help in clearing the city of its rat problem and for keeping their children safe. The city council and mayor also apologized again to the Pied Piper for their earlier turn down to pay him and conceded their mistake. From that day on, the city of Hamelin celebrated a great palm over the rats and recognized the Pied Piper for his frippery and magical powers. The townspeople organized a jubilee to show their gratefulness, and they invited the Pied Piper to attend as the guest of honor. The Pied Piper accepted the assignment and arrived at the Jubilee to cheers and applause. He played his magical tune on his flute, and the people of Hamelin danced and sang in festivity. From that day on, the city of Hamelin lived in peace, free from both rats and the Pied Piper's wrath, and the legend of the Pied Piper lived on as a memorial of the power of music and the significance of treating others with kindness and respect.